Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to explain you all the details of linear discriminant analysis also known as LDA. So once I created that PCA video, which you people liked a lot, a big thank you to all of you for that. And many of you requested to create a LDA video as well. In this video, I bring you everything about LDA right from mathematics to the fundamental concept of how it works to Python implementation. Stay tuned guys, video is going to be very informative. Let me take you to the whiteboard and try to explain you all about LDA. So guys, if I talk of LDA, right here, LDA stands for linear discriminant analysis. Okay. And D stands for something known as discriminant. The meaning of this is uh, we are trying to have a discriminating factor between two categories or two sets or two classes. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to explain you what is LDA and why it works, how it works. Then I'm going to tell you the important thing, how PCA is different from LDA, because many of you might be having confusion on this. I'm going to tell you the maths behind LDA. And I'm going to tell you the Python implementation of LDA. And then I'm going to tell you some conclusion like where should we use and where we should not use LDA. So first of all, guys, I will just take a small data here. Um, let's say the data is HDFC bank data. Okay. HDFC bank data. And here I have two columns. One is called Sybil score, Sybil score and other column is called customer classification, or you can say a class of the customer, whether customer is good customer or bad customer. Okay. And Sybil score, I will put here like 500, 550, let's say 700 and 750. Okay. And classification is, let's say bad customer, bad customer, good customer and good customer. So I take this data and I give this data to you and I tell you, Hey, uh, can you learn the pattern and tell me, uh, how do you, uh, you know, differentiate good customer and bad customer. So what will be your answer guys? It's very simple. It is only one axis. So why don't you project the data on one axis like this? And you know, you create a boundary on the civil score on something like 600. And everybody who has scored less than 600, you call them bad customer who has more than 600, you call them good customers. Simple. So what is this guys, this black line, this black line is your original axis. Original axis means your data is in civil score axis. So civil score is column of your data and your axis is also representing civil score. Okay. How many dimensions we are talking here guys? One dimension. Okay. Now suppose I add one more dimension here. I add one more dimension here and I say here number of years customer is associated with HDFC bank. So it can be two years, four years, one year, eight years, anything. So now we have how many dimensions? Two dimensions. So this one line will not be enough. Okay. So we have to draw the data first of all on two dimensions like this. On one dimension, we can have Sybil score. On other dimension, we can have customer number of years, right? And then there will be entries. There will be data points. For example, uh, this can be a data, this can be two data points and these can be two data points. Now it becomes a little difficult for you to create a decision boundary like this. Okay. But still with some level of accuracy, you can probably create a decision boundary like this. And you can say that, Hey, Aman, everybody who falls below this boundary is a bad customer. Everybody who is above this boundary is a good customer. Probably here also, which axis you are working with guys, you are working with original axis. Understand this. This is very important. Original axis. Now, suppose in real world, how many times you have seen data is just two dimensions, guys. Data will be like 200, 300 dimensions, right? In those cases, if I want to create a decision boundaries, right? Then original axis is not sufficient. This original axis that we are using here and this original axis that we used in one dimension is not sufficient. So what do you do? you take help of LDA, LDA linear discriminant analysis. What LDA gives you? LDA gives you new axis. Okay. LDA gives you new axis. What you will do on the new axis? 
you will project your data on the new axis for example this chart that i'm talking about here uh, this particular diagram suppose lda gives you new axis it calls it ld1 and ld2 okay and then that that data points can be projected on this new axis like this okay like this and then your life of creating a boundary will become easier that is the entire purpose of lda and why we use lda okay now we will understand we are talking about the new axis right so same thing happens in pca also so how pca is different from lda interview question conceptual question you must know this okay so first of all i will write here some similarities between pca and lda so similarity number one is both are both are dimension reduction technique okay both are dimension reduction technique so when i say new axis in lda right it is nothing but you can say components okay so your original axis or original columns will go out of picture these new components will come which can be less in number so both are dimension reduction lc uh, lda and pca both use eigen value and eigen vector concept eigen vector and eigen value now some of you who did not watch my pca videos guys please go ahead and watch that video because both these concept i have explained in detail in that video very important for you to understand go ahead open the link watch that video okay and now here what i'm going to show you is the difference between ld and pca right so this difference is important guys the difference between pca and lda is in terms of purpose the purpose of pca is to capture the maximum variance okay so capture maximum variance of the data so when principal components are created then what is kept in the mind is principal component should capture the maximum variance of the data on the other hand when linear discriminant components are created ld1 and ld2 what is the purpose here is purpose here is to provide provide the separation boundary which means when linear discriminant analysis creates the components then the purpose is not to capture the maximum variance of the data but to project the data on a axis such that creation of this boundary becomes easier okay so pc and lda difference is this must to know for you now we will understand little maths behind lda guys so let's say for simplicity i am taking one axis only for now okay one axis of sibyl score okay and let's say this is your decision boundary decision boundary coming from the lda okay and now let's say three uh, three data points are on this side or two data points are on this side okay and two data points are on this side okay from sibyl score and this is your decision boundary of good good customer or bad customer suppose this decision boundary is created with the help of lda so how lda works is it will have two different components means it will have a mean for example mean of these two we will call this mu1 mean sibyl score similarly mean sibyl score this side we will call this mu2 okay it will have the variance which in the language of lda we call it s1 known as scatter it will have the variance this side in the language of lda we call it scatter s2 okay so how lda works is the purpose here is maximize the difference between mean of two groups so here we are uh, considering two groups only maximize the mean obviously it makes sense also right if means are closer then obviously the separation is not good right if means are far then separation will be good and what do you think about this scatter or loosely you can understand it as variance variance will be low should be low right then only we will say it's a good group or good categorization so s1 square plus s2 square goes in denominator and what happens in lda is this needs to be maximum okay i am saying you how internal mathematics work this needs to be maximum and this needs to be minimum which means this becomes your cost function of lda this this thing 
from here to here this becomes your cost function of ld if you don't understand cost function and loss function guys there is another video on unfold data science link is here you can watch that as well okay now where from this this cost function will be optimized on what parameter you think guys so we discussed about eigen value and eigen vector here right and in my last video i explained you that so here we are talking about projecting our data on a new axis right projecting our data on a new axis so how data will be projected on a new axis guys we need to have the direction of that vector right we need to have that vector's direction for example if i call my vector as v right then in this direction so it will be very clear if i put it here this is your vector direction and suppose your initial data point is here so what you want to do you want to project your initial data point in the direction of this vector like this okay then only your uh, these components will be created how to do that first thing in doing that is we need to know what is this vector and this is a eigen value and eigen vector problem okay so to know this v right this cost function becomes a function of that vector which vector will give you know optimize this function and once you you know plug in values here how did we decompose that guys you remember right we transposed and multiplied for example if vt and our input data for example input data then this will get projected to the new axis right so once it, this is a eigen value and eigen vector problem so this v becomes your component the v v becomes the uh, parameter that needs to be optimized for this cost function and then your data will be projected on the new axis okay so this is the math behind lda guys and let me take you to python and try to show you how it works in python with a simple data okay so i am importing here pandas numpy guys taking a data called wine data load wine from sql learn only because this data has some clear separation between classes okay and you have some independent variable and target variable i am separating there are three distinct categories in wine data 0 1 and 2 in the target i am saying right and what i'm going to do i'm going to import linear discriminant analysis and i'm going to just say fit transform on my independent and target okay so if i run this you will see that i get two components here how many components two components first component is explaining 68 percent second component is explaining 31 percent and here if you see there is a clear distinction between different classes of wine there are three classes of wine in different colors you can see lda1 and lda2 are your new axis not the original data axis new axis so when you project your data on the new axis you have a clear separation boundary here and that is what is the purpose of lda so very simple you can take from sklearn learn and use it but it will not work like this in all these scenarios let me show you with some other data here for example i have just commented it for demonstration purpose let me take the digits data in place of wine data okay so digits data i am taking and this has many classes i mean target so if you can see here uh, 10 different categories or 10 different uh, classes in output okay and when i run the same code for that right you will see that the the uh, you know circles are on top of each other you see here it's not a very clear uh, in these two dimensions, it's not very clearly visible how it is creating. And also, um, this might not be very useful for model training purpose also. So what I'm coming here to say is, your LDA will work good if there is some distinction between the behavior of underlying classes. Okay. Distinction in the features, statistical feature of classes in underlying data, then, or, then your LDA will look very clean here. If there are no such distinction or no such variation then your lda will not look very clean so what you have to do you have to do some feature engineering and make your data clean make your data and you know distinct so that lda's life is easy so that lda can create the boundaries easily okay and here i'm doing fit transform same way you can fit a model also and you can very well use it as a classifier model okay so what did we discuss in this video guys we discussed what is the purpose behind LDA, how LDA works, right? 
how it, it is different from PCA, how, what is the cost function for this, how it is optimized, projected on a new vector, and we saw some Python implementation, okay? And I told you where to use LDA and where to do some feature engineering before using LDA, okay? So give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video and I will, I will see you all in the next video guys, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.